everybody. Welcome back to the Everyday Night. I'm Joe. And I'm Jeff. And uh, Jeff, we're talking tonight about something that just happened a few days ago during the Oscars uh, when <clears throat> um, Chris Rock made a, what he what has been referred to as a joke uh, about Jada Pinkett Smith. Now, and Now, you have said on numerous occasions that a joke doesn't have to be funny. Yeah, but that's 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 just yeah, a joke. Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that is in a completely different context, and that was being humorous. And a joke doesn't, when I say a joke doesn't have to be funny, it doesn't give license for a joke to be an insult and bullying. But we will get to that in a moment. So we're going to discuss the slap. And, but there are a lot of issues around it. And the first thing that I think should be mentioned is that <clears throat> neither, obviously neither of us is uh, African American and do not claim to have a special insight into the black experience, but we have been listening, paying attention to what people have had to say. So I'm just gonna describe the situation here because it's not as simple as Will Smith being offended by a joke and and then reacting with physical violence. It well, is not. Okay. Let's let's before we before we dive into it too much. Okay. We're we're examining this. In my opinion, we are we in particular are examining this because this is what chivalry means to a lot of people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So we're so, looking at it from the virtues point yes. of view of the virtues. And as we always other, do. Otherwise, to me, this is a couple of black guys got a public beef and one guy smacked another guy and I, and I don't care. This has something to do with what we're talking about. Yes. And it's very public. It's very topical. Everybody knows about it and everybody's got an opinion on it. So we're yes. going to give ours. Yes. Good. Um, <clears throat> so before we begin, though, um, what do you have to drink tonight? <laughs> I have, I have because I think I'm going to need it. A, uh, a local misunderstood distillery. I thought of very appropriate. Um, it's a ginger spiced bourbon um, from a local brewery or local distillery in Detroit. I'm called misunderstood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I have a. Uh rather several fingers of uh, <laughs> red breast Lustau finished Irish whiskey. Lustau finished? Lustau fin Lustau is uh, a Spanish sherry maker. And the red breast is, Irish whiskey is often finished in, are you, are you, are moving you having my camera. an earthquake? Move my camera okay. so I can see your, so I can see your whiskey. Okay. okay. There, there we go. go. Um, red breast. Uh, uh, Irish whiskeys are often finished in sherry casks. This is a particular one it's called the Lustau, finished from the Lustau sherry um, company makers okay. in Spain, and it's it's good. Uh, this is the Irish whiskey I prefer to use in a one of my favorite cocktails called a um, a an artist's special because it also it combines Irish whiskey and sherry, so the sherry finished. Irish whiskey seems to be appropriate. So cheers. Cheers. And I'm going to move my camera right back to where it was because this isn't working. There we go. That's better. So, <clears throat> and, and another thing is you and I are probably not going to agree on all this as in our little pre recording beginning, but we're still friends and we're yeah, going to we talk have. about this like friends. Yes. And we, we may not come to a conclusion. We rarely do, actually. <laughs> well, and I, I can tell you that I have written and deleted and written and deleted my thoughts on this because every time I learn more and consider more, I have come to a different conclusion. And the, the lesson I take from that is that issues require distance, sometimes require distance and deliberation. And that 
has been for me. And so I'm, <clears throat> uh, I wanted to talk about this, but I can't claim to necessarily have you know, a complete opinion, even, even agree with, my, with myself about what my <laughs> opinion is. So, <clears throat> so the, the, everybody knows the incident that Chris Rock made a comment about Jada Pinkett Smith's bald head. <clears throat> um, Will Smith took exception to it, got up out of his seat, slapped Chris Rock, went back to his seat, uh, said, keep your wife's, my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Yep. Said that That's a couple of times. Mm -hmm. And then, <clears throat> and the evening went on. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> there is a history between them. Chris Rock has made comments about, and I'm using the term comments as had jokes about Jada Pinkett Smith before. Mm -hmm. And and Will Smith has talked to Chris Rock before about this. And Chris Rock persisted. Now, <clears throat> One of the questions, one of the comments I've seen, and I, I happen to know some people who are professional comedians and writers, and they've said, well, you know, what's next? It's a joke. You're supposed to be, you can, freedom of speech. Well, first of all, freedom of speech is the, is, uh, the government being prohibited from inhibiting right. your speech. Freedom of speech does not mean you won't bear the consequences, private consequences for your speech. Right. Sure, sure. However, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> there's a difference between joking and bullying. Bullies do several different things. And it may sound like I'm changing the issue here, but I think this is important. Bullies do several things. They are good at hiding what they do. They're good at covering what they do by doing it publicly. And they're often, there's something known as Schrodinger's douchebag. <laughs> okay. Somebody, <laughs> a bully makes a comment and doesn't decide whether he means it's a joke or not until he sees how oh. people respond, right? So he is or isn't uh, a bully or it is or isn't a joke. Well, <clears throat> there are comedians and there's a history of professional comedians being insult comics. Notably, yeah. like Don Rickles, who, who I thought was a whole generation one, will not remember, but we do. Right. But he was, I thought, one of the least funny comedians. It was his whole shtick. He would insult people. But he wasn't funny. And his his insults weren't weren't really personal. They were generic, calling somebody a hockey puck. Well, you know, they and, were. They, they were, were sometimes they were absolutely racial and ethnic. Well, that's true. That's true. Absolutely. And it's surprising. Well, kind of anyway. But he, but he was but he was an equal opportunity asshole. Yeah. I mean, he, <laughs> yeah, but so <clears throat> there's a principle, long-standing principle in comedy that you punch up, not down. And Terry okay. Pratchett said that satire, if you're using satire to to go after the powerful it's satire but if you're going after people who can't defend themselves it's bullying and in this case i think that chris rock was not being a comedian he was being a bully and there's a distinction between somebody being a comedian you know if somebody heckles a comedian as far as i'm concerned that the heckler punched and the comedian gets the punch back but the the I, several years ago in the in the oscars ricky gervais uh who's ostensibly a comedian and comic actor was just was not funny he was picking on people he was making fun of people yeah public people public personalities should be able to take a joke but yeah picking on somebody's medical condition. Now, this is, is, this is, this is to me, this is people applying suffering in a situation that doesn't necessarily 
warrant it. Now, and, and your point about bullying is, is valid. How, however, bullying usually implies one, the, that the bully has some, uh, is in a position of power, whether it's physical or, or economic or whatever, over the person who's being bullied. That, I don't see that relationship existing. I, now, I, Chris is on stage and Jada Pinkett Smith is in the audience and there's a power dynamic there. Yes. But they are, in my mind, at, at worst peers. And, and it's very likely that she, in Hollywood, is a more powerful individual than he is. Except, yes, and I agree with those things, except <clears throat> he was picking on her medical condition. And I don't, and I don't see that necessarily true. He was picking on her hair style. No, she, her hair is like that because she has a medical condition. That's a whole, really? It doesn't look like she has a medical condition. Yeah, it looks like she, she has cut her hair very short. I know no, she, she does. Has, she does. But, it's, but it, it does, she's not sitting in the audience with, with patchy bald spots. But she, her, she, hair is, her hair is cut short. Lots of women have their hair cut short for lots of reasons. Except. Except Chris Rock, several years ago, produced and narrated a documentary called Good Hair, Good Hair yeah, all about all Black people's hair, and particularly the relationship that Black women have with their hair. And <clears throat> it was... And, it's, and, and Jada Pinkett Smith has the access to the most expensive, the highest paid, the best cosmetics the best hairstylists, the best wig makers, but she could have chose any appearance she wanted and chose to wear her hair short at a formal, and I don't care how she wears her hair. What I'm saying is she had, she had every choice in the world to how she could present herself and chose that. Other, except it's either bald or a wig or patchy as you said yeah and <clears throat> the condition of alopecia disproportionately affects a lot of black women and is often related to chemical bleaching and straightening and other stuff the issue of appearance physical appearance and particularly their hair is a significant one and chris rock can't claim to know that not know that so there is right, a but he but the joke the, would not have been delivered if she had decided to wear her hair some other way. My thing, my my point is that the joke was about the hairstyle, not about her condition. Except there would be no hairstyle like that without the condition. Um except unless she chose to wear a wig, which was a possibility, but she's discussed that at length. And it's not the first time that Chris Rock has decided to pick on her particularly. So there's already, there was already an issue. Well, if you know you've got an issue with somebody, do you keep poking them in order Depends to try on how to- how good friends you are with them. In or, Yeah, but if you're not friends, do you keep poking them? That's what a bully does to try to provoke a, re, provoke a response because as I said, bullies are really good at, at <clears throat> choosing where and when they do what they do until the person who's bullied is so finally it's the last straw and the, they respond. And then the person responding to the bully is the one who gets in trouble. I know this from you know, yes, yes. school days. I, I, right? I understand. <clears throat> and you said in our episode about Ukraine, that people have to stand up to Putin. He's a bully. That's not, now, the, that, but that's not the, that is not the way I presented it. Yes. Yes. People do have to stand up to bullies, but you don't, but standing up means throw the net. You throw, if you throw the next punch, you're going to throw it at me. And then we're on. That's what standing up is. Right. So it does go to the next point which is what should the response have been? First of all, I'm contending it wasn't just a joke, it was bullying. But then the question is, 
what's the correct response? And <clears throat> I have, I've gone back and forth on this, but I've come down on the side of finally, there were other options for how Will Smith could have responded. There were options for how Jada Pinkett Smith could have responded. Getting up out of your seat and slapping Chris Rock made it about Will Smith, not about yes. the bullying. Okay. So and so it was, agree. it was counterproductive. I think a, there were are better responses and I like to think, and, but I do understand when somebody is pushed and pushed, they will lash out at a bully and their response may be inappropriate. One of the things that we've talked about many times is personal control. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> I will say that <clears throat> when Will Smith got up, he slapped him. He didn't punch him. True. A slap, it, there's a difference between a slap and a punch. And I try to explain this to some people who have no experience with either. And a, <laughs> a, sla a slap is, which is sometimes referred to as a bitch slap, which is, um, I understand. Uh, hmm? Which is denigrating in itself. It is, but it's not, it, I don't think it should be referred to that. A slap is meant as a humiliation. Yes. As a, you are a punk. A punch is, I consider you an actual threat. He slapped him, right. he didn't punch him because he was saying, you're essentially, you're a punk. Um, <clears throat> but even that, so there was a difference there but I, that was not the most effective response. If and, he had, and you yeah, and I ahead. understand, you and I understand the difference between the slap and the punch. Yes. Okay. As you said, people who don't understand the difference or have never had any experience with either one, see it. It's all violence, it's right? All violence. And that to me, this is where the problem begins. Like you're saying there were, there were better responses that could be had. Yes. So I, I would, in, in, in light of the virtues and our other conversations about courtesy, and particularly about weaponized courtesy that I have mentioned <laughs> before, having learned from my mother, if Will Smith had, you know, people said he could have addressed it after the show with him. Well, he's had private, private conversations with Chris Rock before to talk about this to no avail. I also think that when a bully acts in a certain way, in a certain forum, they have to be called on their actions in that forum and at the moment. Fair enough. So yeah. I think that Will Smith should have gotten up and said, we've not talked cool, about, not, not cool. cool. We've talked about this before. It, it's, it's not a joke. To, to shame someone or it's not funny to to mock someone's appearance you can't be hide hide your bullying can't be hide behind your pretending it's a joke i love my wife she's beautiful shame on you for picking on a proud beautiful black woman who has a hair condition that so many women in our community have shame on you okay that's not something he should have stood up and said that's something he should have written and published afterwards okay but he should have said he should have stood up and he said not cool chris yes that's what and then then if he tried to play it off he should have said not cool chris you need to apologize yes right now and yes. he should not have let him go on yes with his until he apologized until he apologized yeah and then he should have sat down and then he could have tweeted all of that all of that head. yes Chris Rock still has not apologized. Yeah, um, I saw something published and then people said, no, no, that wasn't actually. It was, yeah, it was, it was Snopes covered it. It was, it was published by somebody who said, this is what Chris Rock should say. Oh, okay. But right. he hasn't said anything yet. So. <clears throat> well, but Will Smith went on to do a sort of tearful non-apology to the Academy and, and to uh, to Chris Rock 
when he stood up to accept an award. Yes. Yeah. I thought that was, it, it, it may have been sincere, but it didn't, do, it didn't, it wasn't an apology. It yeah. Did not it, serve as an apology. It didn't. What he wrote later was um, yes. a sincere apology. He took responsibility for it. Um, so, so to me, as bad as the action was, he did recognize that he did. He himself yes, recognized yes. that he did wrong. Well, he so everybody also, who's saying, no, no, he did. He was all right. No, he recognizes that he did wrong. And he's saying he's sorry. Yes. He and owns it. Everybody else ought to recognize it. Yes. Although he certainly, one of the first people who came over to talk to him right then there was his publisher, publicist. Okay, he's a public right. figure. He's got a publicist. Doesn't matter. So he had to, he, I believe that he felt a certain pressure to apologize. But I think he also recognizes that it was an emotional response and the wrong response in the situation. I do agree with what you're saying. The standing up saying, not cool, not cool. You should apologize. And not letting him go on until Chris Rock go on until he apologizes. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> the people, my, some of my friends and acquaintances who are saying it's, it's comedy and you need a thicker skin. I'll reiterate, there's a difference between comedy and bullying and a, a bully hiding behind the veneer of being a comic is, it is still a bully. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, we, we, it's the same, some of the same people who talk about how bad body shaming is are still are, are saying, but it's just comedy. Well, no, it's not just comedy. And I, and I agree. I think the response, not the, my long-winded response, <laughs> the, but your suggestion saying, not cool, you should apologize. Yeah. And I, I think that that would, because that would make it not about him Will Smith, right. that would make it about keep the onus on what Chris Rock had said and how she, he should apologize for what he said. And, and it also, that would also serve then as a template. Yes. For people in future. Yes. Right. Where it's not okay to throw hands because your girlfriend got her feelings hurt. You need to stand up for her, but you don't need to bitch slap somebody right you can you do it with be, your words right and unless everybody out there is willing to do the same kind of research you did this was a bad example so, yes <clears throat> I, and i agree that people who people who don't know the difference between a joke and bullying might think that a joke might not take a joke well and there are plenty of people who can't take a joke well and, and there's plenty of people <clears throat> who are looking for a good excuse to slap somebody because to make it about them right right so uh, uh there was a good in my opinion i uh, a good op-ed summed up my take on this whole thing perfectly was kareem abdul jabbar out of out of nowhere wrote a great little essay about this whole thing I, he yeah. actually said in his that the the worst thing about all of this is what what will smith did was give comfort to the enemy where now now racists can point and say see this is how black people act when they're confronted it's it's violence is their first response and it doesn't matter that they're wrong it's just you know a, a bullet is a bullet ammunition is ammunition if it can be twisted it will be and this this has been already yeah and i i i think that if he had and it's you know <clears throat> if he had done what you suggested i think that would have been the best way to handle it followed by a longer explanation yes. of what i said right? yeah you're absolutely right <clears throat> context context is everything I, I think that um, the the it's difficult to re I, I've said um, we start over again between um, 
action and your reaction, there's a, a decision moment. There's yeah. a sometimes it's really short. We've talked about you, that. How decide you decide you're going to act. <clears throat> Unless you are prepared by having thought about things. Unless you're prepared by knowing who you are and what you think, you may be you may react to an action without that quick that kind of deliberation either in advance or in the moment and i think what he did and was react without thinking about it there are people who suggest it was staged and all no wasn't staged but he didn't stop to think about it and i think the um <clears throat> one of the and i i understand that i understand i because i one of the reasons I say you should take a second and think about something before you react is that I've, whenever I haven't done that, I've regretted it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and sometimes you don't have enough time to sit and deliberate and then act. Because if the I moment had passed, if he hasn't gotten up, hadn't gotten up right then and said hey not cool you should apologize if he hadn't done it and the moment it passed it would have been too late so <clears throat> one of the things that i think is useful to do is imagine different situations you're in and we've talked about that with defense and we talked about that with courtesy we talked about that with propriety and the, all the other virtues imagine yourself and particularly if you have a history with somebody, think exactly. about the, the situations, because if they had a history, which the, I, I have come to understand they did, and he, he knew that Chris Rock was going to be on stage, he should have been prepared for the likelihood yeah. that something, he would have said something. I, I, which, that's, that's a point I was about to bring up was that you, as you said, they, he, he should have saw this coming or right. something like this. Right. And if it didn't, oh, well, it passes by. No, nobody's harmed. But if it had happened in the past, you have an opportunity to prepare yourself. Right. And if this was the, if he, if he didn't act emotionally, that's, see, that's, to me is even worse. If he, if he thought about it and he chose this path, it's even worse than if he just acted emotionally. Yeah. Um, I think that given that he was, given the situation, given that he was nominated, given all of that was going on, it's likely that he, he was even who he is under additional emotional stress in the situation. Therefore, it's even more important to think ahead yeah. i'm gonna go i'm gonna make this speech what could happen what are the questions that are going to be asked i'm going to go in this interview hit what are all the possible questions they could ask what questions can i ask them i'm i'm going to you know all of these different things i'm walking here what could happen where are the possible points oh, that person i can't see their hands do they represent a, you know, i mean constantly thinking about stuff either just that's just ahead of you or thinking about a lot of eventualities um i think is a useful adult skill well and i think there's also and this has been brought up by other people too that at first he laughed with everybody else then he looked over at his wife she was not laughing not happy i think that was the pressure that made him react emotionally. Um, he saw her. <clears throat> he saw her under stress. That is possible, and I can't claim to know his mind. And I'm not gonna going to say. I think it's it's just as likely that he laughed as uh, out of nervousness or conditioned response. Okay. Oh, it's I'm laughing. Wait a minute. That no, that's not good. And he you know, yeah, looked over there, but he could have already, it might be that she, 
her reaction confirmed what he was already thinking. It might not, Maybe. you know, we just Maybe. don't know. We just don't know. No, you're right. I'm just saying that there, that is, that is equally possible that when he saw how upset she was, that right. he got emotional about it. Yes. He wasn't, he wasn't particularly emotional about it until he saw how emotional she I, was. And That's I'm not, reasonable. I'm not, I'm not willing to state that with absolute certainty. Because, I'm not either. I'm right. just saying that it is equally plausible. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> again, I think the, the problem with the outcome and the outcome is a result of the action. The problem with the outcome is the conversation is entirely about Will Smith. It's not about Chris Rock and his bullying, his comments. It's not about those, that it's not about that. Um, well, I don't, I'm, it's harder for me to blame Chris Rock because I think he's following a trend in, in these award shows. And I don't, which is I, also I a problem I, that, and to me, that is a, I don't know if it's a larger problem, but it's, it's certainly something that ought to be talked about is that this isn't a roast. Okay. Right. This is an awards program. And lots of people have talked about how it's a bunch of, you know, millionaires sitting around talking about how great each other is. And so that they can, you know, push their movies and make more money. Uh, of course it is. But, but I think that there's, the, 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 my point is that it's not a roast. When, when it's a roast, everybody going there knows they're under fire. And they got to be okay with it. Yes. Or, this, or not this, go. Or not go. And these, these Academy Awards and some of the Golden Globes and some of the other things have become that. And yeah, and I don't, I don't think that's good. And when you've got people who are nominated, who are going to be there, it's not like they are going to choose to not be there. So yeah. the, the person on stage already knows who the targets are, right? Um, I think that was not, yeah, I think, and I think that's an ongoing problem. I will say that some of the people I know, particularly some of the black women I know, have posted that they would have gone up and slapped the shit out of, smacked the shit out of Chris Rock as well. Um, <clears throat> and as is their prerogative, and I'm not to say that, and I'm not going to gainsay what they're what they're saying i i think that in the societal larger societal context there were other options than that um and i and and that's not a universally held opinion either so no, certainly. i think there's uh, it's as i said it is not as simple as somebody got offended by a joke and and committed violence we've discussed the nuance the viol but I, but violence is not just violence in the situation and everything going into it i still i do agree that there were other options that would focus the issue where keep the focus of the issue where it needed to be and it's important to understand in various situations that aren't about you, how to keep it not about you. Right. The, the, the <clears throat> big dramatic hero play options that, that people have taken are often about, not about the situation they're trying to solve, but about them. Mm -hmm. and their emotional need or their lack of um, consideration of what some of the other options available to them are. So now, and however, I, I, I mean, I agree with, with everything you're saying, except that to me, there, it, it can be as simple as you don't respond with violence to an insult. You respond to violence with violence. Yeah. So if you, if you pair away everything else, history, 
race, culture, if we all should be able to agree that you don't respond to verbal attacks with violence, you respond to violence with violence, and you only use violence as a response to violence. Let's clarify the difference now, between physical violence and verbal physical violence. Physical verbal, violence, yes. right? I, I, because, I am I'm speaking specifically right. about physical violence because a verbal attack can be considered a, a form of assault. Yes, but it is not considered violence. Right. Okay. So um, I am specifically talking about physical violence. Just wanted to, I wanted to clarify that. Yes. Yes. So can can we not agree with that to that at that level? So is that yes. not a true statement? Yes, but let me ask you a question. Someone, you're in a you're in a bar, you're in a restaurant, you're in a public setting, someone insults your wife. Right. After she's done kicking their ass all over the floor, <laughs> uh, how do you wife. how do you respond? Respond to to wit to the to, to the, them insulting her. I stand up and say, "You better you better leave now." So you're threatening, you're threatening violence. There's yes, I mean the I will not let you stand here and talk like that to my wife. Get out. And if they don't. I'm, I'm going to continue to stand there and say, leave, get out, stop talking to us. You are not welcome here. This is a bar, right? This is a public venue right. we're talking about. Right. So right. when in those situ kind of situations, <clears throat> I've, I've, I, I am willing to make a scene. Yeah, one of the exactly. things, one of the things that bullies are use as a hiding technique when they're in in public doing what they're doing in public is understanding that most people are not willing to make a scene in public in response i am absolutely willing to make a scene in public right. in response that's, that's, that's and exactly say, what i'm talking about say you you need to apologize and you need to get out of here because it, and then i would i would say hey you know here's what this guy did public shaming yeah is useful say here's what this guy did he said yeah. this uh he should apologize he should get out well, i'm not going to apologize i'm not going to get out no you should and at that point if everybody is saying it the owner of the bar right it's a disturbance the owner of the bar might come and kick them out Exactly. That's a good. I'm and, talking about exactly the same thing. Standing up, getting in their face, and saying, right. "No, no, 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 stop it. Get out. Leave now." And get into their face until the only thing they can do is push. And once they push, then it's on. <laughs> Just right. like I said. Right. So you are talking about provoking a bully into taking the first swing to give you a reason to then respond physically. No, if they're willing to leave, they can leave. Right. That's not my goal. My goal is not to force them into violence. My goal is to say, I am willing to go to violence if you are. <clears throat> so I, I do think that, again, if Will, I, I agree with you, if Will Smith had stood up and publicly shamed yes, absolutely. Chris Rock, it, it would have been more effective because it would have kept the onus on what Chris Rock had said. It might have taken a longer explanation or Chris Rock, Rock might have responded, hey man, I'm just, I'm just joking up here. He said, no, it's not funny. You know, it's not funny. We've talked about this. Apologize. Yeah, right. Then apologize. Then yes. apologize. If it's not a big deal, then apologize. Right. You know, that's okay. You're yeah, we're we're agreeing on right. what should have happened. All right. and I'm keep saying what happened isn't what should have happened. Right. I agree. And, I'm, and, and I, we're, I dislike we're, what I dislike, though, is everybody saying, no, this was fine. No, this was absolutely the right response. No, we, you know, and it's not all of it's, it's not everybody is not saying that, but some people are. 
And I think one of the things that we are trying to do here is talk about the nuance of the situation and the simplicity of the situation as well. Both there's all this stuff going on and all this history and all these other issues and stuff. And, and yet you respond to words with words, but it's not just, it, it wouldn't be as some people have suggested, Hey, just take him backstage later and talk to him about it. no, it's no. when, when somebody, somebody's bad behavior needs to be, needs to be confronted in the moment in the same venue. And I remember with my, my aunts and uncles, my mother's siblings would say awful things and I would call them on it. And my mother once took me aside and said, you know, you're not going to change their mind. I said, I understand that. But if I let their comments go without commenting on it, then I'm complicit. And I think that not not confronting bullying, and again, I make the distinction between comedy and bullying, is being complicit in it. And I think that the way you're suggesting he would have been better to handle it, and the way I suggest writing about it later, yeah. <laughs> I think would have been a, a better solution. And I hope, first of all, that neither of us is ever in such a situation where we have to address something like that. But if we are, I hope we have the presence of mind to address it in that way. Well, I will say that in my youth, I was absolutely in that position and I did exactly the wrong thing. I got better. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I have, uh, because, had, because as you were saying, yeah. it was my ego on the right. line, but right. nothing it had, it had less to do with how my girlfriend felt about it than it did with my ego. Right. And I got better. I learned, I figured it out. I realized, I realized the, the futility and the fallacy of what I was doing and stopped, mm-hmm. recognized that there are better ways, better, more effective ways that won't get you in trouble <laughs> for one thing <laughs> well and and yeah it's often about just it's about doing not what is immediately emotion, emotionally satisfying but doing what is effective at achieving your objective right that requires understanding what your objective is in a situation is it to get the the behavior to stop is it to get some and an apology is it to get what is your objective right if you don't have a clear idea of your objective then you're left with well, an immediate yeah, yeah. immediately satisfying emotional response that is ultimately counterproductive well certainly you, you certainly can't form an effective strategy without a, a clear goal right so <laughs> So I, I don't, I don't, we didn't take this, you know, step-by-step step through the virtues, but we certainly, I think, talked about this and, and I'm glad that we came to an agreement on this because at, at the beginning of the, of this discussion, I didn't, I thought we might be at loggerheads about no, who, was right I, who was wrong in this. No. And I think we're, I think we are in agreement. I do think that there's, I think it was important to present and discuss the larger issues surrounding it because all of that backstory all of those issues would tend to push someone toward an emotional response rather than a considered strategic dispassionate effective response right but and 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 i i agree my my point is only that I don't want that to become an excuse or a mitigation of what actually happened. No, I agree. I just, I think that's where it's being used. That's what's, what's being put out there. Is it? And I, no, this is totally justified by, by this and this and this and this. No, it's not. It's not. No, but it's, it's made understandable. It is made understandable, but not 
not justified, but made understandable. And hopefully, uh, well, it won't be, uh, people won't learn shit from this. You know? <laughs> so, no, like I said, if, if, if Will had done what, what we suggested and call, call, absolutely call him on it yeah. in the moment. Yeah. Now that would have been, as I said, a better template for yeah. future confrontations of this type. Yeah. Now it's now it's just going to be throwing hands in bars, and my man Will Smith was a hero. So this is how I'm going to act now. Yeah. And and he, I hope Will Smith takes the responsibility for that down the road, further on, that he. I makes that statement that no this was not the right thing to do don't follow I, that i again. hope also that chris rock yeah i i hope something. chris rock recognizes that he what he did because he the, hurt somebody's the, feelings yeah the the and i know that kareem abdul jabbar who i have a great deal of respect for he's um he's a very thoughtful person um, and tall, really, and really tall. Yeah, very tall, but <laughs> very, very thoughtful. And um, I think that Chris Rock also did a disservice to the their community by ignoring what he knows about the issue of hair. Well, Chris yeah. Rock was an insensitive jerk is what it comes down to. Yes. Yeah. And and he ought to say, I'm sorry, I was an insensitive jerk there. I won't I won't do it. Remember the. the yeah. Yes, you're right. You're right. I won't do I I made it. I did something wrong. It was an insensitive jerk. I shouldn't have said that. I won't say it again. And here I'm going to I'm going to donate a million dollars to a, a fund the, that the is about alopecia. Visit. Yeah. Some society like or something like that. That yes. would be cool. That would be good. That would be very good. So, hey, Chris Rock, if you're listening, yeah, that's what yeah. you should do. <laughs> if you're one of our 40 followers, I think <laughs> you'd be, you'd be, uh, you'd be well served by uh, making a public gesture like that. <laughs> yes, yes. And if you need to go back and listen to the episode about a correct apology. Yeah, and we're gonna have Will Smith on next week. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it, it might. I don't, I don't think my mother ever bitch slapped somebody, but boy, she was really good at, at politely <laughs> making somebody want to, want to feel like they should crawl under a rock. So beat me, master, beat me. <laughs> no, that, no, you should. That wasn't your mom. No. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. So, okay. Then let's, uh, wrap that yeah i think i think i think it is i think and thank you for listening while we uh, really discuss this issue not knowing exactly where we were how it was going to go but um i think this is well, it's was, an important discussion it was a good discussion and i'm i was absolutely confident that you and i would find the common ground in this because we've known each other long enough and mm. and I trust your 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 ethical judgment on this in the in the end you you are willing to consider larger factors I was looking at the incident itself and I and I thought between the two of us I'm going to stick to this core principle mm -hmm. and and you you can you can offer all the mitigation and then but I thought in the end I, I was confident in the end we would agree that everybody in this in, in, in this thing was wrong. Yes. Everybody I, owes somebody an apology here. <laughs> I do yes. <laughs> I I do think that I mean it's very typical of the way I approach things is I look at everything, every issue from every angle possible before I meander my way to a conclusion. So um, but and I'm, I'm and I'm willing to say <coughs> this is my opinion. Now change my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well. And then I'm but but I would I ask you to my credit I am willing to change my mind after I have stated an opinion. 
because and it's just when you're, that. when you're presented with new information, you're willing to consider consider the incorrect opinions of others. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> is it, is it, that is it, that's all you can ask of anybody as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I mean I, I will I will defend an opinion certainly yep. but I require people to defend an opinion I don't take offense when my opinion is well I attacked. I do and I, I I do differentiate between an opinion and a conclusion okay fair and enough. an opinion what's your favorite flavor of ice cream and there's no arguing yeah. about that. A conclusion is based on data and information and, and arrived at considering yeah, okay. the entirety of information available. Yeah, that's a that that's a, a fair distinction. We've we've talked about that. Yeah. I and I guess I guess for myself, I don't I don't I don't stand on conclusions very much. Because I'm often, I'll be happy to state my opinion as an opinion. This is what's based, I, I have this opinion based on these circumstances and these experiences. If you can provide me with more circumstance, better data, whatever, I may change my opinion. Conclusions are hard to come by, I guess. I, I well, I, I asked a, um, I was, discussing this in a in a class once i off i always discuss the difference between opinions and conclusions uh with my students and i use the example of the flat earth is not supported right. by by data observation empirical observation um information it's it's simply an, it's an opinion it's not a verifiable justifiable conclusion and it's incorrect and and i said you know there are people who don't think the moon landing was real and and i mentioned dinosaurs too i think and one uh, young woman said well my family doesn't think that that there were dinosaurs she thinks <laughs> that, that you know they're young earth young earth so well, you know, they're they're incorrect, but you know, them being incorrect only harms me and society if they promulgate their their incorrect beliefs to other people in a way that damages support for science and education and so on. She said, Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I don't believe that we went to the moon though, she said. I said, well, <laughs> if I if I presented to you information showing that that the technology to fake the films of the moon landing did not exist at the time of the moon landing, and that to develop that technology would have cost more than the moon landing itself. Mm -hmm. And if I presented to you all of that information and more, would it change your mind? And she said, no. I said, then we have no basis for a discussion about that. And I turned that into a little lecture about when you have the basis for what if, a conversation. What if, what if don't. aliens brought the technology for us to fake the moon? <laughs> you know, I, when I was in high school in biology, <clears throat> our our biology teacher said the best available information we have about the origin of species is based on scientific evolution and so on that's the best explanation we have what's another possible explanation for the beginning of life on earth i said well and i raised my hand said, a well, i said um organic molecules um, could have come to earth on board uh, meteors that were bombarding the earth at the time and seeded the ancient oceans with organic chemicals. He said, no, 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 I meant all life. I said, you said life on earth. You didn't say all life. He said, yeah, but where would that come from? I said, that wasn't your question. Yeah. <laughs> and he just shook his head as 
Yeah. And even my <laughs> teachers. <a> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had, you know what? I had a lot of those teachers too. <laughs> <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I think we have. Yes, we have discussed this and we, we almost addressing. wrapped it up as we have as we have done in numerous occasions. We almost wrapped it up and then we didn't. Yes, a, a Midwestern goodbye in our <laughs> episodes. So that's right. Um so thank you everybody for listening. Uh as always, um uh, like, uh, subscribe, share, and send us your um ideas for topics talk for us to discuss. Talk about us in your offices. And, and stuff and uh thank you for showing up again yeah and, and uh we see you next time be thou a good night and true <laughs>